Is this still the city? Is it that? Person learns to unicycle. Is it that? Learns to ride a unicycle. It all means the same thing, but I want... Let the story commence. Craig. Um, Craig got on a bike that he bought for a dodgy shop and he was cycling down the fucking road. Fucking thing came apart, didn't it? It was a ringer. That's when they take the front of one motor that's where the back is fucked and they take the back of another motor where the front was fucked, cut them in half, get rid of the shite bits, the shite end, the done-in end, and then weld the two good ends together to make a new motor. It's called a ringer. They call it a ringer. And it's very bad because see if there is a wee bit of a crash, you've just got some shoddy welding holding it together and it falls to fucking pieces. A cut and shot. Is that what a ringer is? A ringer is swapping a written off car uh, identity on a stolen one. Oh, is it? Is that a different thing? Uh, let me just let me just double check that. It sounds like, sounds like it makes sense. A ringer, like something's a you know a dead ringer for something that kind of thing. It's a it's dead like an all thing. Ringer car. Oh, I see. I was wrong, everybody, I was wrong. A ringer, this is a car that's been given the identity of another vehicle. Typically one that's been written off to disguise the fact. Um, that it's been stolen. Casual crooks sometimes just change the number plate. Professional thieves will usually ring the VIN as well. Cut and shot. When you buy a stolen car, your pocket may suffer. But if you buy a cut and shot, it could damage your health as well. Get on it. A used by the motor trade for a car that is made up of two crashed cars or written off cars. The back end of one is welded to the front end of another to look like new, but the vehicle is likely to be unroadworthy and probably worthless when you come to sell it. Right, that's a... Right, so it's a cut and shot. Sorry about the ringer thing, but it was also a ringer. Anyway, so it's a cut and shot. Bike. They'd welded two bikes together. But the front was fucked in one and the back was fucked in another. Took the two good ends, welded them together. It uh, fucking came apart. Well, Craig was going down a hill. And it wasn't just any fucking hill. It was Gardner Street. <laughs> fucking all the hills. To be gone down. Fucking Gardner Street. There he is. I'm down fucking Gardner Street in Glasgow. Jesus. Look at that. Look at that. I stayed there. That's a wee last stayed. In one of them. Looks cracking, doesn't it? So I kind of Glasgow, San Francisco. Did you know these are slowly sliding down the hill? We had to pay a fucking ton of money along with the other residents to get some stupid fucking thing put on the front of the building because it's sort of falling apart. Unbelievable. And you know what happened? So I think I told this story before. I so what happened was as Craig was gone down, Craig was fucking gone down, uh, basically unicycling, unicycling on the back uh, wheel. The fucking, st the, the handlebars were gone. He was just on the back one. As he was gone down, he overheard some of the uh, people who must have stayed there because they were talking about They told this story. And the story was this. Somebody who had kind of recently moved in, right away was introduced to the neighbours by some sort of meeting that they had. Um, they said, would you like to take part in the meeting? Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, just various things and we're going to be talking about uh, Party Housing Association. Um, uh, all right. I mean, we've only just moved in. But uh, all right. And then it went to a wee meeting thing and one of the neighbours is like, this is like within a, a week of moving in. 
And they started listing all this stuff. Partick Housing said they were going to do this. Partick Housing said they were going to do that. They didn't do it. They said they were going to sort out these factors and they didn't. And, and they were kind of moaning and moaning and moaning about how Partick Housing Association are shite. Uh, they said they were going to do this. They said they were going to do that. It went on and on and on and on and on. And this is like the first fucking week. This is what Craig was hearing as he was going down. Because the two people that were, he was listening to were joggers. And they were jogging down, and Craig was um, going downhill as well. That's how fast these joggers were. And it sounded like one of them, one of the joggers, stayed in Gardner Street, a Gardner Street flat, and the other one didn't. And he was just telling his uh, jogger pal like everything that's been happening. And the jogger said, "So what happened was this went on for months." He'd be copied into emails for the ten the you know tenants and other occupants um moaning to Partick Housing about this and moaning to Partick Housing about that. You've not done this, you've not done that. We need to get the roof checked out, we would like to get this checked out and that checked out. Eventually, Partick Housing no long no, like coming up for when um this jogger guy was planning on actually moving out. Partick Housing eventually did get back to the, the people who stayed in that, that tenement block and said, all right then, right, sorry, sorry we've delayed everything so long, right, we're going to get a, uh, I don't know, a surveyor or whatever the fuck it is to come out and check the whole building. Checked the whole building and found out that the, like, th this, this here at the front, um, like see that, see that sort of like fence there, the stairs, see the stairs, stairs are a bit dodgy, they need to be fixed, not optional, the fence going up the stairs, they're a bit kind of rusty, it's not just a cosmetic thing, they need to get fixed, that, uh, that alone, about 10 grand, uh, the building at the front is sort of starting to lean forward a wee bit, it's starting to go down, that needs to get fixed, big metal things at the front of it, like, a lot of work, scaffolding, big fucking screws having to go in the front, the roof needs to get fixed, the chimney needs to get fixed, all this shit needs to get fixed, and they can't knew about, and they can't cared about. Certainly not this fucking jogger, didn't he? He's just ready to move out. That building was hit with a bill of about a hundred thousand fucking pounds. So, see... What the jogger was saying, this is Craig over here in the lot. See when this cunt was ready to move out? This jogger. Before they moved out, they're just ready, you know, like, you know, get, you get a house and then you sort of keep it for a while and it goes up in price, you sell it, you get a bit of money that goes towards a deposit for another place and all that sort of shit. Uh, wiped out. Wiped out less, less money than when they moved in some years before because of this shite, because of the neighbours moaning and moaning and moaning when you're going to sort this out, Partick Housing Association, when you're going to sort this out, when you're going to sort this out, and then hit with this big fucking bill. Each, each house, about like 15 grand bill, something like that, each, each house, that one, that one, 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand, 10 grand, 10, 10, 10 grand, for no fucking reason. No cunt would have known Nay no cunt would have cared. Congrats. Congrats to everybody in the building who harassed and harassed and went, hurry up, why are you not getting back to us? Why are you not getting back to us to Partick Housing? Well done, they got back to us. Now we're all 10 grand in the fucking red. Congrats. That was the jogger. And Craig overheard a lot. As uh, so he was unicycling doing anyway, Craig obviously lost fucking balance. Fell. Skidded. His face. All the way down. All the way down. Took his face off. Then some motors went there because they couldn't see him. And it was icy, by the way. A bin lorry up here. Um, even with its brakes on, slid all the way down. Like a fucking slalom, sort of, you know, like a, you know, the big ski jump thing, whatever the fuck it is. That speed. Right into Craig. And even when Craig was lying there with half his face gone, dying... He looked to that jogger gone by, the one who was 10 grand in, 10 grand in the red because of his neighbours. Um, Craig thought to himself, at least I'm not that cunt. The end. That's a true story, how do I know? Because I was that fucking jogger cunt. True story. 
True fucking story. True story. True story. Here, I'll prove it. Know that. See these big metal things? See this shite? I believe it was that. This doesn't look done. This doesn't look fixed. Have they got it? They've not got it. Different sort of building, though. Different building. Let's see. Have they got it? They've, they don't seem to need to ha have it. That's interesting. What about them there? They don't seem to need to have it. That's interesting. But this one. There we go. Big screws in the front, look, big bolts. How's about that? Fancy that. Let's go back a bit. Look at that. So they've got that. They had to get this done. But somehow this building doesn't have to get it done. No, neither, no on that side either. Or that one. Or that one. That's interesting. That's interesting. It's all, it's almost as if this was completely fucking unnecessary. It's all, it's almost as if because of the moaning of the people in this fucking building, um, we had to, we went and got this fucking build. This the, the people who live here, I mean, had to get this this work done that was completely fucking unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. Almost as a punishment. Almost as a kind of, all right, well, you want the place sorted? There you go, you better get that done, get that done, that's going to cost you. No, you said you wanted it, you, said you wanted this to be, have, be very, very thorough. I think included in the cost was things like emptying out the fucking loft and, and all sorts of fucking things. Uh, Jedman says, talking utter shite. I'm talking about me. It happened. It's fucking real. Fucking un unbelievable.